What's up, people? Welcome to today's session. My name is Alav, and this is without the ninth and tenth English channel. I hope that all of you guys are doing good. Before we get started, I would like to apologize for not being able to, uh, you know, put up any videos for the past couple of days. There's been a lot of technical issues. There's been a lot of power cuts and stuff like that. That is why I was not able to do it. But at least from now on, people, I'll be a little bit more. Uh, you know, careful about all this stuff and you'll be able to see a lot more regular sessions, a lot more regular videos coming out in the come upcoming weeks as well. So once again, welcome. I hope that all of you guys are doing good. This is going to be the third session of Household Circuits and today is going to be a very interesting day because we are going to talk about earning. Yes, we'll talk about earning and three pin sockets that we have at home. Once again, without wasting any more time, let's get started. Now, if you haven't watched the previous videos yet, that is the main circuits, main switch and its advantages, please make sure that you go back to the videos and watch that. It's going to be an, it's an amazing session, so make sure that you watch it. Yeah, I know that I'm not supposed to self-brag it, but still, it's a good session, so do check it out. And let me know whatever doubts you have in the comment section as well. So with that said to you, let's begin. All right, now. If you had attended the previous session, I had told you that earning is something which is a very important part as a safety device or a safety feature basically. So earning is something which prevents or which protects us from getting any sort of electrical shocks or you know things like that, you know, getting electrocuted and stuff like that. Earning basically protects us from all of that. Now earning can be of two types. You have local earning and then you have earning of an appliance, like each and every the bigger appliance, like you know, for a microwave or for a refrigerator or for a computer, that would be your earning of an appliance. And then you have local earning as well. Now, what we're going to talk about in today's session is how do we reach or how do we attain this earning and protect ourselves? And also we'll understand a little bit more about the three pin sockets and everything that is related to earning. Right, people? So without wasting any more time, let's get started. All right, local earning. Now, in the last session, if you remember, I had shown you a basic way of how uh, current reaches every single circuit at home. So you have the live wire, you have the fuse that is connected to the live wire. We've already talked about the fuse in the previous session. I hope you guys have watched it. If you haven't, make sure that you do that. So then you have the electric meter, which calculates how much electrical energy you're consuming every month. And then you have the main switch. From the main switch, it gets you know supplied to the rest of the house. So if you look if you look very very carefully, you can see that there's a live wire going to every single socket, every single electrical appliance that you have, and you also have the neutral wire as well. But together with both of these, you also have the earth wire individually taken from all of these circuits. You can see that all of these appliances, and then connected to the the meter that you have. From the meter then, there's a main earthing wire that goes right into the ground and then you have the uh, copper plate as well, which is basically ensuring that all that extra charge is getting dissipated right into planet Earth. So, what is this local earth? This thing that you do, from where you take the uh, earthing wire from the meter and then place it into the ground, this is what is called as local earthing. Now, this is done individually for every house. It's not like collectively it's done for one single house. No, it's like not collectively done for like, you know, 10 houses, it's one. No, for every house, you would have this kind of feature, which ensures that all that extra charge that is there gets into the ground. So generally what we do is that we maintain, again, uh, the Indian government has set some standards so to, you know, uh, so that they can abide by that safety protocol so that they don't, you know, get electrocuted in any ways. So generally this is the safety protocol. So the earthing wire has to be about two feet away from the house. That's about 0 0.61 meters and about eight feet deep. That's about 2.4 meters in depth. And then uh, ultimately at the bottom of it, you have the copper plate, which is uh, basically dissipating all of the charge. So if you look, if you take a closer look, this is what it would look like. So you have the earthing wire, which is connected to the meter. From there, it goes right into the hole that we have dug so that the wire goes in. And this wire is again protected. That's a thick wire to ensure that, you know, a lot of whatever that extra charge that is there, everything gets dissipated. So you have to have a thick copper wire. You can't have just a thin one. That is not going to work. So obviously, you want a thicker copper wire and then to protect it to make sure that, you know, uh, it's not affected by other, uh, you know, other kind of external factors and all. You also have a pipe through which the earthing wire goes in. 
and then at the end of it you have the copper plate but not just that people with the copper plate we also put a mixture of charcoal and salt as well so generally this is the thumb rule generally what they do is that they put about 10 kgs of charcoal and 10 kgs of salt mixed together and they place it uh you know uh what to say they place it in and around the copper plate so that you know it can uh what to say it can actually reduce the resistance so the reason why we use charcoal and uh, salt is because you know that salt is a good conductor so it helps in conductivity and charcoal also reduces the resistance as well so to uh, reduce the resistance and to improve the conductivity we basically put that layer of charcoal and salt mixed with it so that you know there's a little bit more better dissipation happening that is why we do that so once what happens and whatever the extra charge is there once it enters through the uh through the wire it in, it goes to the copper plate and then from there it gets easily dissipated right into the soil that's how it happens right so one end of the copper rod is connected to the meter end of uh, the meter and the other end is the thick wire which is connect which is buried deep underneath about eight feet deep that's about 2.4 meters simple all right now see guys the whole point of earthing is to ensure that all that excess current that is flowing should not pass through a person it should not electric electrocute them that is what electrocution is all about so it should not pass through your body rather it should all be sent out of the house in a safe manner so that there is no one getting affected or there's no one getting electrocuted so that is all about your local earthing but what about the earthing of an appliance now this is also important this is important for every single device now people generally if you have noticed these kind of big big appliances like you know your refrigerators and uh, your microwave ovens and all that they generally have a three pin socket you know probably notice that it's a three pin socket so the three pin socket basically have three wires in them one would be your live wire which is generally brownish or reddish in color then you have the neutral wire which is generally bluish in color and then you have the earthing wire which is generally greenish in color so this earthing of an appliance again is to do is done so that it does not create any sort of harm for a person who's working with that appliance because it's not see you cannot for example you cannot turn on a microwave just by using jedi mind trick it doesn't work you have to actually go touch it and if there is any sort of leakage and you are in touch with that if you just come in contact with it there's a very high probability that you might get electrocuted so as to avoid these kind of fatal situations that is why earthing of an appliance is so very important and more importantly is this is what you have to understand the earthing of an appliance is done with the outer shell the outer metallic case that is there that is where the earthing is done so that you know when a person touches that thing he does not get electrocuted this is why it is done that, that is why the earthing work you see if you look at the terminal of this it's connected to the it, it is connected to the case it is connected to the metallic case and not to the live wire or not to the element but it's rather it's connected to the metallic case so that when a person is in contact with it there is no electric charge passing through the body and that is the whole point of it so that you know again look at that so the earthing is done to the metallic case so that when a person is in touch with it they should not get electrocuted at all that is why we do earthing for every single appliance especially the bigger appliances for the smaller appliances it's not that necessary like you know for example your mobile chargers and all that they have just two pin they are just two pin sockets and they they like it does not really matter you know it's, it's not that, uh, that it's still you still have to be careful but still it's not that uh, dangerous as compared to using a bigger appliance like that of a microwave or that of a refrigerator all right now all this while from the start i've been talking about this three pin socket so what exactly is this three pin socket i'm 100 percent sure that every single one of you guys watching this video would have used a three pin socket or are using a three pin socket right now as we speak so basically a three pin socket looks like this right every one of you guys have seen this so this is what is a three pin socket so basically what does it mean three pin these are the three pins that you have so again each of these are connected to one uh you know one of these wires so this would be your uh, earthing wire generally greenish in color uh, red wire would be red or brownish wire would be your live wire and the black or the blue wire would be your neutral wire so that's how it goes right so that's how it is connected now the question really is have you ever wondered why is the earthing basically which is a bigger pin always thicker and longer like why is it why isn't it that the the bottom ones are bigger and longer why is it only the top ones 
Why? Easy to poke in. What is what is what could be the possible reason? What could be the possible reason? Let me know in the comment section below. What do you think is the possible reason? Why as to why the earning pin, especially the pin that the one on the top, that is the earning pin, right? So you have the earning pin. This is the live wire and this is the neutral wire. So that's how it goes. So earning pin, why is it longer and thicker? Have you ever wondered why? Let me know in the comment section below, right? I'll tell you what is the reason for it. The reason is very simple, guys. Let's say that the live wire is longer. Let's say this is a little longer. Live and the neutral wires are a little longer than the earning pin. Now, let's say there is some sort of fault in the equipment and you are about to connect it. All right, you are about to connect it. You connect it and you, as you're connecting it, basically, let's say that you're in contact with it or let's say that, yeah, you're just connecting it. What would happen is that because of that sudden surge of current passing through the electrical equipment, that could lead to short circuits and that could lead to, uh, you know, that could lead to fire as well, which is definitely a serious thing, right? It's, a, it's definitely a serious thing. So as to avoid that, so as to make sure that, you know, even if there is a fault, the person does not get electrocuted or if there's no, there should not be any sort of short circuit, that is why people the earring pin is connected or is much more thin much more thicker and longer so that as soon as you put in as soon as you put in before the live wire goes in before the live connection goes in before the current starts flowing through it before the you know the charges start flowing through it if there is any sort of you know disruption if there's any sort of you know fault in the equipment it should not affect the person using it so it's for safety reason that is why this thing is much more the earning pen is generally much more longer and thicker than that of your live wire and the neutral wire simple it is to make sure that you don't get electrocuted so that as soon as you put in if there's any sort of fault or anything it'll not affect you it'll not affect you before the live wire goes in you're making sure that you're basically safe before you put it in that is why that is done but like I told you, if you talk about your two pins or plugs, it's not that necessary because again, they can they uh, they you know generally take in very less uh, they consume very less power, so it does not does not really matter much. But in these you know heavy power equipments, there's a lot of power consumption happening. So if there is no safety protocol uh, pro safety protocol taken, then it might affect the person. And, and so avoid that. We have this particular feature. It is not something just to make it look fancy or anything. But now you know what is the possible, what is the reason that the engineers have designed it like this. Right, people? An interesting fact, something that you're using every single day. Now, let's talk about the sockets because obviously these things, these pins, these plugs have to go into a socket, right? The socket is also designed exactly the same way. So you have a earthing wire with uh, the earthing connection, the earthing hole, then you have the uh, the neutral and then the uh, live wire as well, all of them connected. So basically these are basically the sockets into which the uh, the plugs would go in and then you turn on the switch and then the current starts flowing through it. Simple, that is how it does. Now, what are the safety precautions for a plug-in socket? When you're plugging in something, what are the things that you should take care of? First thing is that you should make sure that your hands are not wet. It should be completely dry because again, this water contains a lot of ions. So if in case you touch a wet socket and if there's some, some sort of leak, some sort of, you know, uh, so, something has gone wrong with it, so there's a high probability that you might get electrocuted. So as to avoid that, always make sure that it's dry, right? I have done this mistake several times when I was a kid. So I urge you people not to do the same thing. I've got electrocuted several times and I'm not even kidding so many times I've, I've got electrocuted so out of personal experience of telling you please make sure that your hands are dry before you touch the socket never ever go with a wet hand out of urgency don't go and just uh, do whatever you want that is not a safe way to do it so make sure that you do that secondly people you should also make sure that there's no gap everything should fit in perfectly because if there is gap you'll probably notice you know, sometimes sparks come out so that is also a possibility so make sure that there is proper it's properly fitted it is not something you know it should not be loose there should not be any sort of loose connection because then if a person touches it then they might get electrocuted so make sure that it's properly fitted and if it is not properly fitting in then try to you know replace it with another socket or make maybe uh change the plug do whatever is necessary but the first priority in your mind should be your own safety your family's safety before you decide to do whatever it is that you're doing right people 
I hope you enjoyed today's session. We will be solving some questions right now. Let me know in the comment section below how was the session so far. But yes, at the same time, be ready to solve some questions as well. Get your pens and papers ready and we'll solve some questions before we get into that, people. If you want to have such interactive, amazing, super awesome sessions like this every single day for the rest of the year, click on the link that is given in the description below and on the comment section as well. That link is going to take you to the whole site of Vedantu where you are going to be exposed to one of the best of the best online platform wherein you have the best of the best teachers to help you score better marks, much better marks in your board exams as well as your pre-boards as well. So click on the link that is given in the description as well as in the pinned comment section below. Let me just tell you what are the features, what are the things that, that, that you should, what is the possible reason as to why you should be clicking on that link. You have the opportunity to attend unlimited live classes, as many ever sessions you want in a single day or for the rest of the month or as long as your subscription is on. You want to attend 20 sessions, go ahead, do it. Nobody's going to ask you. It's an open source where you have unlimited live sessions and each and every session of those would be very much interactive. You will have tons and tons of quizzes with the highest of highest level quizzes where you have the opportunity to check yourself out right there and then if you have truly understood the topic or not you'll have leaderboards you'll have fastest fingers list lots and lots of fun is what you're going to have in those live sessions with this you also have the opportunity to compete with the rest of the world and see where you're really at if you're if you truly believe that you're someone you know you are one of the best of the best ninth grader eighth grader seventh grader does not matter tenth grader this is your chance to you know to uh, compete and check if you truly believe if you are truly what you believe you are Apart from this, guys, even if you miss out a session, because live sessions are happening 24 bar 7. Now, it's not possible for us to attend every single session, but don't worry, people, we've got you covered. Even if you miss out a session, don't worry, you can still take the quizzes because I know that a lot of you guys attend sessions a lot, uh, like lot more for quizzes. So even if you miss out a session, don't worry, you can still take the interactive replay sessions and still take the live quizzes and still get on the leaderboard. So you never miss out on the most important questions in any session. Does not matter which it is, right? With this, you have the opportunity to download all the premium content of every single session and the handwritten notes of every single master teacher of every single session so you never miss out mark my words you never miss out on anything that is important with all of these you also have unlimited tests and assignments as well lots and lots of tests and assignments and i would not say unlimited but yeah it seems unlimited because you have so many tests and assignments again to check what is your true capability to test yourself to make sure that you're getting better every single day with this to top it all off you will not just have one teacher you will not just have the master teacher to help you clear your conceptual doubts but with this you will also have the class teacher as well to help you clear every single doubt of yours inside the session itself so you never are left alone whatever doubts you have you it'll be cleared right there and then with the help of the master teacher as well as the class teacher and that's all right people with this we also have 5,000 plus micro courses and crash courses all for free. So many things, a lot, lot, lot more for a lot, lot, lot less is what you're going to get with this amazing opportunity that you have. Click on the link that is given in the description as well as in the pinned comment section as well. And enter the coupon code AME Pro to avail your discounts as well. So, uh, Basically, people, you have the it's a subscription model. So if in case you go for the one month subscription, the base price of that is around two thousand six ninety nine for the whole month. I know it seems like a lot of money. So to save some money, we have the coupon code AME Pro to avail a discount of about five hundred rupees. And what the what happens to the price is that the price that you pay comes down to two thousand one hundred and fifty. 
99 rupees. If you go for the three month program, that's about 6,999. So that's basically 7,000 rupees for the next three months. I know it seems like a lot of money, but if you, you apply the coupon code AME Pro, you'll get a discount of about 1,400 rupees. And what you're essentially paying is 5,599 rupees. Now think about it, guys. I know that even for this, it seems like a lot of money, but think about it. Think about it logically, being because all of you guys are learning so much about math. Just think about it mathematically. In that one month, you would have attended a minimum of 200 sessions. A minimum, minimum of 200 sessions. You can go up to 300, 400 dollars. It's totally up to you guys. A minimum of 200 sessions. That means that per session, if you divide it by 2,159 divided by 200, that's about 11 rupees, a mere 11 rupees per session. And if you go for the three month program, that's about 5,599 is what you're paying. And that means that in that three months, if one month you're attending 200 sessions, in three months you've done 600 sessions. So if you divide that, that's gonna be even lesser than uh, the first one, that's about nine rupees per session. The more number of sessions you take, the lesser amount of money is what you pay. So a lot, a lot of value for money is what you're gonna get. The link is given in the description as well as in the pinned comment section as well, people. So if you think, very very as a you know as a simplistic mind if you think about it 11 rupees is less than what you pay for a packet of lace right for that five minutes of fun you pay 20 rupees it's a party pack so yeah 20 rupees is what you pay but this is going to be less than for your own education for your own future you are going to be investing less than that all right people link description coupon code is amy pro to avail your discounts as well i hope to see you guys in the regular sessions the fee the seats are very limited it's filling up really soon because your exams are approaching so make sure that you uh, grab hold of this opportunity as soon as you possibly can all right guys so that's it let's get into the questions and answers right now so here's the thing people i'm going to be asking a, a series of questions based on what, was, what we have just studied right now now what I want you guys to do is write down the answers in a sheet of paper and cross check if you're giving the right answer. Now if you want, you can also put it up in the comment section as well. I'll also be giving, giving, giving you a homework at the end of the session. So make sure that you stick around for that. Make sure that you give the answer in the comment section so that by the next session I can put up your names uh, in the stuff. Right guys? So excited for that. I hope you guys are. Moving on to the first question. When the main switch of the house, uh, house circuit is put off, it disconnects the what? When the main switch is turned off, uh, in a house circuit, what what does it disconnect? Does it disconnect only the live wire? Does it disconnect only the neutral wire? Does it disconnect only the earth wire? Or do you think that both live and neutral are disconnected when you turn off the main switch? What do you guys think? Let me know. Write it down on the sheet of paper as an ABC or D. If you want to write the whole answer, that's also perfectly fine. I'm going to give you five seconds to answer the question. But after that, I'll be telling the answer. If you want to get pause the video, take your time and think it through. It does not matter. But I want every one of you guys to try out this question because yes, practice makes man perfect all right remember that three two one the answer guys is not option number a not option number b not option number c it's definitely option number d both the light and the neutral wire is disconnected not just the light wire it's not just the neutral wire or not just the earth wire both of them are disconnected when you turn off the main switch because there's no more flow of current happening at all there's no more flow of charge happening so obviously there's no current flowing so yes both of them are generally disconnected that's all second question Earthing is done to do what? To protect electrical appliances, to save electricity, to protect human beings and other things from electrical shocks or to give underground electrical supply. What do you think is the possible reason why we do earthing? Why is earthing so important? Like we could have saved so much wire, so much materials by not doing it, but why do we still end up doing it? Is it to protect the electrical appliances? Is it to save electricity? Is it to protect the human beings and the other things with electrical uh, from electrical shocks? or to give ele ground, underground electrical supply? And the answer people in five, four, three, two, one. Pause the video, let me know what is the answer. The answer to this question is definitely gonna be option number C. You are more concerned because life, obviously guys, life is more important than an electrical appliance. You can always buy a new refrigerator, but you can't buy yourself. You can't buy a new you, it's not possible. So to save people, to save people's life, that is why we do earning, not for anything else, right? That is the major concern, not the electrical appliance. That is secondary. That's money can buy it, but not you. That's fine. Here's another one. We use dash rod for local earthing of our houses. Do we use copper rod? Do we use aluminum rod, platinum rods, or steel rods? A very very simple question if you ask me. Like one of the most basic questions. I'm pretty sure that everyone would have given me the right answer by now. Let me tell you the answer in three, two, one. The answer, people, is gonna be copper. It's gonna be copper. 
for sure is going to be copper people because copper is a good uh, it's a good uh, conductor of electricity and it's not as expensive as other materials as well and hence we use copper we use thick uh, copper rods to make sure that a lot of you know so that there's no um, what is it? Because again, of heating effect of electric current. So if, if it's a thin wire, then obviously if it's, if it's a thin uh, copper cable, then uh, because of overheating, it might break. To avoid that, we use a thicker copper rod. Moving on to the last question for today, people. After this, we have, you also have the homework as well. So stay tuned for that. Here's a question. In local earthing, the minimum length of the pipe electrodes should be less than what? Should not be less than what? In local earthing, in local earthing that we did, what should be the minimum length of the pipe electrode? Should it be 2.5 meters, 3 meters, 3.5 meters, or 4 meters? What do you guys think? Do you guys remember it? I told you this in the start. Let me tell you the answer, people. In 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. It is going to be option number A, people. It's 2.5 meters, or in terms of feet, that's about 8 feet. So you should be at least 8 feet. It cannot be anything lesser than that. It can be a little bit more, but definitely not going to be less than that. So 8 feet, which is about 2.5. 2.4 to 2.5 meters is what you have right guys so this is your homework for today let me know what is the answer in the comment section i hope to see all of you guys it's a new year people so i want to see some josh i want to see some answers in the comment section when i open up the comment it should be just blasting with your answers let's see how many ways are able to give that an answer the question is this the dash pin is thicker and longer than the other two Quite simple, no? But let me know what is the answer in the comment section below. Let's see how many ways are able to do the answer. Uh, give the answer as soon as you possibly can. That's it from my side, guys. I hope you enjoyed today's session. Once again, thanks a lot for joining. The link is given in the description to avail your Vedantu Pro subscription course. The coupon code, do not forget that. It's A-M-E Pro. A for Apple, M for Mango, E for uh, Elephant, P for Pineapple, R for Rocket, O for, o for what? Or for opera <laughs> uh, anyway so that's the coupon code as well again do not forget to like uh, do not forget to like the video do not forget to subscribe to the channel and be a part of the squad hit the bell uh, notification so that you are aware of all the uh, upcoming videos as well so we will stay tuned for an amazing video that is coming out a lot of good series are coming out pretty soon so make sure that you subscribe because we're going to be coming out with all some some of the most important topics that you guys are still wondering about like what books to refer uh what is the study strategy all of that uh, we'll be talking about it in the days ahead so stay tuned for that i'll see you guys soon catch you guys in the next one take care bye bye see you